Okay, migraine headaches. Um, migraine headaches are defined by a cluster of symptoms and these symptoms could include unilateral head pain, so just pain on one side of the head. Okay, um, it tends to be, so number one is unilateral pain, um, pain that is worse, worse with movement, increased with movement. Um, can be associated with nausea and vomiting. And um, it, you may have photophobia or phonophobia. Okay. So this would be number three. And number four, photophobia or phonophobia. And then number five um, would be um, a pulsating sensation. So five would be pulsating or throbbing. Okay, so those, um, and typically not every, not every migraine sufferer is going to have all five of those. Um, in order to diagnose a patient with migraines, they typically need to have um, only two out of the five. And interestingly enough, if you talk to migraine experts, they say that the most prominent one that really differentiates a migraine from other headaches is a headache that is worse with movement. So patients, when they get up from a chair, or walk up some a flight of stairs, or get up for a walk, um, and the headache gets worse, then it is almost almost always a migraine headache. Now, <clears throat> migraine headaches tend to be associated with, uh, with triggers. Oftentimes they're food triggers, um, wine, beer, um, things like that, um, aged cheeses, and there's specific chemicals in there. There's nitrates, and there are, I think the other protein is called, a group of proteins is called taurines. Um, these tend to be in aged cheeses and a whole bunch of other things. NutraSweet can be a trigger. Um, lack of sleep or too much sleep can be a trigger. Stress or relief from stress can be a trigger. So there's a whole number of them. Um, now, so what is the, the basic underlying pathophysiology? Well, you know, we used to uh, have a a theory called the vascular theory and you're probably getting the picture that pathophysiology is filled with lots and lots of theories. We used to think that the pain in migraines was primarily due to um, vasodilation and um, actually vasoconstriction and then vasodilation of blood vessels um, that are, were supplying the brain, either the you know the vessels that branch off of the carotids, or the smaller vessels um, in in the uh, in the dura. But you know this has largely been discounted. This was actually the theory behind the development of triptan medications, and we thought that uh, triptans were going to be a successful medication for treating migraine pain because it caused vasoconstriction. And triptans do work. But now we're thinking that the reason that they work has nothing to do with the fact that they va cause vasoconstriction, that it probably has a separate mechanism that has to do with their effects on serotonin. So theory number one is the theory of vasoconstriction, and I think this is kind of out of favor now, though not completely. Vasoconstriction um, and vaso uh, actually vasodilation and vasoconstriction may still play a role. And it's, it's actually vasodilation that causes the pain. The vasoconstriction is the first step, but the pain occurs when there is vasodilation. Um, now, the theory now is that um, it is changes in the brain itself that cause a pain syndrome. And there is a th now a theory called the theory of cortical spreading depression. And cortical spreading depression is a slow moving wave of depolarization that starts somewhere in the in the um, base uh, in the basal areas of the cortex and slowly spread over about 15 minutes across the surface of the cortex and then it moves down into the thalamus and when it gets down um, and actually it continues to move down into the brain stem and then um, and then it makes its way up to the sensory cortex. Actually, it does two things from here. It travels up to the sensory cortex and, and it may um, cause pain itself there. 
in the sensory cortex. Um, but the, um, the trigeminal nerve actually branches off fairly close to the thalamus. And um, the trigeminal nerve is activated. And the trigeminal nerve, if you remember, has three branches. And I can't recall the name of the three branches offhand, but one goes up to the forehead, one goes sort of to the cheek, and one goes down by the jaw. And the um, the pain in the pain of migraines is typically or very commonly in the trigeminal distribution on one side of the head, and this appears to be due to a um, due to direct stimulation of the trigeminal nerve from the uh, from the thalamus. Now, interestingly enough, um, there is a direct pain stimulus. And there is also inflammation of the nerves. So the thalamus itself becomes inflamed, and um, the trigeminal nerve becomes inflamed. And it is believed that these processes are the primary causes of pain in migraines. Now, migraine headaches um, are associated with four different phases. Um, there is a premonitory phase, which I think the majority of migraine sufferers are not conscious of, but um, this may be just a sense of, again, sense of deja vu or fatigue um, or emotional ability that, um, that can warn the patient that they will be getting a migraine soon. The second phase is the aura. Now, typically when we think of auras, um, we think of visual auras. They are the most common. And the visual auras correspond directly to the movement of the cortical spreading depression across the cerebral cortex. And it moves about at about uh, over a period of about 20 minutes. And this is the exact period of time when um, patients have the visual aura. Now, the visual aura, if, if I kind of draw someone's visual field here, usually, typically, the visual aura will be um, a group of squiggly lines that move their way from the lateral side of their field of vision across as the aura continues over about 20 minutes across to the medial side. Sometimes it stops about halfway, sometimes it continues all the way. And actually there's some really nice videos um, on, on YouTube that depict what a visual aura looks like. Now there are other types of auras. Patients can have motor deficits, they can have weakness, they can have, um, they can have auditory auras. Um, and you know, so there's a whole bunch of different kinds of auras, but patients with migraines, uh, there are more patients that do not have auras than that do have auras with migraines. So oftentimes migraine sufferers will skip the aura stage. And incidentally enough, there are actually patients that have, um, that have auras, but never go on to develop headaches. And actually there's a member of our faculty here who has uh, very prominent visual auras, but never develops a headache. Uh, the next stage is the headache, uh, the headache phase, and this lasts from four to 72 hours, and this is when um, patients will have um, significant head pain. And then a post-ectal period, and some people are conscious of this, some people are not. This may be fatigue, it may be a sense of euphoria, and again, it may have emotional side effects. Okay. And that is my, the end of my discussion on migraines.